Joe Weider. I've been training the champion since 1936. I well remember Lou as a teenager, before he started building his body to the fame that he now has, he did not have a great chest. He was not envied for it, but today he owns one of the most powerful chests in the world. Every bodybuilder is envious of his enormous, massive, well-developed chest. What went in to build that chest, he's about to tell you in this video. I've asked him to tell you everything all his secrets, all his techniques, not to withhold a single thing from you, because I want you to know everything that's humanly possible to succeed. Because I love you and I want you to succeed. That's why I've asked Lou to spill the beans. In this tape, you'll know exactly what to do. So listen to him, apply his techniques, go for it, and you will succeed. Hi, I'm Bill Dobbins from Muscle and Fitness Magazine. If there's one exercise that brings out the show-off in most young bodybuilders, it's the bench press. Many of them seem to take almost as much pride in being able to do a 500-pound press as they do in achieving success in competition. But not Lou Ferrigno. At 6 foot 5 and weighing close to 300 pounds, he's certainly capable of lifting impressive poundages. But Lou isn't in the business of impressing people in the gym. He's a bodybuilder. And training with weights for him is simply a means to an end. And that end is developing a complete championship quality physique. Forget about powerlifting. Let the ego out of your gym. Bodybuilders are not strong in general by how much you uh, work out in a session. You don't have to prove yourself by half the bench three or 400 pounds. You have to feel the movement. Because if you want the proper chest development, you have to feel the complete range of motion. That's true. You can't stand on stage in a bodybuilding show and suddenly say to the judges, I know my chest doesn't look that good, but I can bench press 500 pounds. They don't care. <laughs> True. The bodybuilding is not how strong you look, it's how you look. That's why it's called bodybuilding, not power building. watching this video think it's easy. It's all pain. The only way you're gonna get some place in body, but you have to really train hard. Don't get me wrong, but if you train hard, have a great body like me. The, the amount of weight I live. Today, a lot of bodybuilders find it's a lot of weight, and a lot of bodybuilders find it's not enough weight. There's a lot of big boys on today. Uh, I've been training for 30 years. This weight is enough for me. In my early stages of training, I used maybe half the weight. I didn't care because I knew that it was deformable. You want to have a long-term career in bodybuilding, you have to really respect your body and respect the exercises because if you do, you're going to have a long career. If you don't, you're going to have a short career, you're going to have a lot of bad injuries, and the long run is going to be a major step back for yourself. That's why I can handle 150, 160 pound dumbbell. I'm going to hurt myself, and the form going to be sloppy. You may feel you need 150, maybe you need 60, maybe you need 70, whatever is beneficial to you. But like I said, respect the exercise and respect your body. I gather also that you believe that the third and the fourth sets where you're over 100 pounds with the dumbbells should be done just as strictly and just as much under control as the sets in which you're only using 75 pounds. Yeah, the third and fourth sets should be done the same fashion. But now remember, some days you may not feel strong. Take 90s, you don't have to take 120 every time. Your body may say, okay, I want to stick with 90 today, I want to stick with 80. But each set, each rep, has to be perfect and be just as good as every other set. Because once you let your mind get off track, you lose that focus, then the workout is ruined. But keeping to strict technique when it comes to exercises like barbell or dumbbell presses isn't always easy. The temptation is always there to bounce the bar on your chest to arch your back to get a stronger angle and use other methods designed to lift the weight rather than train the muscle. But Lou has a method he frequently recommends to young bodybuilders to get around these problems. Joe Weider always recommends that in learning to do these various exercises, start with a weight that's really a little bit too light for you. Feel what that form is and then increase the weight 
but if you increase it to the point where you don't feel that same form, even though you're lifting the weight, it's probably too heavy. Joe is correct because you want to start very light, but eventually I think your body really takes over because once you learn to appreciate the movement, perfect the form, and the body and the feeling goes together, everything else uh, takes over control. And then you won't really have to think about it. every rep. Am I doing it correctly? Am I doing it correctly? Once you build that set pattern, it remains like that for life. That's why it's very hard to change bad habits to good habits. It's so important to, to learn the good habits, and you won't have to worry about changing later on. However, as much as he concentrates on strictness and form, rather than power and lifting heavy weights, nonetheless, when Lou Ferrigno poses and flexes on stage, his chest is indeed one of his most impressive body parts. In fact, it's so impressive that it's hard to believe that his pectoral development was actually somewhat of a weak point when he first began serious training as a teenager. The two things that young bodybuilders have always traditionally wanted were big arms, big chest. How uh, responsive was your chest to your early workouts? Well, my chest wasn't very responsive because I put too much time and effort into arm training, bicep and tricep. I've done push-up, I've done bench presses, didn't respond. I have a nice little shape, I always feel flat, I've always wanted thickness. The mistake was when I was very young, when I would do chest, I would concentrate on doing heavy bench pressing where the form was in the best form. I will arch my back and hip because at the time I didn't know any better. I didn't have a gym to work out. I was basically trying to lengthen on the muscle books and the fly that never done it properly, I would do a half weight. But over the years, I've realized that stretching is the most important thing when it comes to uh, chest training. It's not really just stretching the muscle. It's the stretching with, in between set, the stretching when you do the flies, the stretching when you do the bench presses. That really is a significant factor in enhancing the development of the overall pectoral training. What to you is the complete chest? What it takes to get a complete development of the chest. When you look at the comparison, when you see the body was are standing sideways forward, you don't see any hollow gap. Like for example, someone has a lower pec development, but they're flat up here. And this is very important to take into consideration because once you do the slight chest pose, you can have a nice lower development, you can be flat here. But usually when you flex, the upper deltoid and the upper pec go tie in together. That's why it's very easy for the eye to pick that up. But training the fashion like I described to you, you should never have that problem. How much of a priority is chest training to you right now? Uh, chest training is very important because it's one of my strong points. Because I'm famous to do my most muscular poses. And that's why when people see striations in the chest, up and down, it can be very intimidating and at the same time be very exciting. And I think it's important because it's one of my strong points that you want to improve the strong point to be stronger than before. It's an important factor because the chest is seen from many different angles. Sideways, we do the slide twice up. Some people have weak points. You can improve weak points, but the strong points always have the strong points. When Lou Ferrigno first began training, most bodybuilders worked out six days a week, sometimes twice a day. Training that much, Lou now believes, almost inevitably led to overtraining. Nowadays, he prefers to train on a four-day on, one-day off split and not work more than one major body part in any workout. What kind of a split are you on? How many days do you train in a row and what exercises do you do each day or, or what body parts do you do each day? Well, now I'm training different, less than I've trained even last year. I'm training four days, one day off. The first day I'll be doing back. The second day I'm training chest. The third day it'll be leg. The fourth would be shoulder and arm. The fifth would be uh, the day off. So in the fourth day, one day off, to me, I find more beneficial than three day, one day off. When I was a young kid and trained, it would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, arm, upper body, and then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, would be leg. It was too much. The chest, or pectoral muscles, arise at multiple points along the sternum and insert into the upper arm underneath the deltoids. The primary action of the pectorals is to pull the arm and shoulder forward and across the body. You always 
you have to think about the exercise you're doing. Never, never do an exercise while your attention on something else. What kind of technique do you recommend doing the dumbbell presses? I believe the bench should be slightly elevated to 20 degrees. You clean the dumbbell and the number one factor should be that you want to have the lower back be flat. You never want to have your back arch. And when you're holding the dumbbell, have it on a slight angle. The reason why I turn the hand on a slight angle like a 45, I get a complete stretch because if I have my hand straight ahead, it's activating too much of the shoulder. So if you want to be shoulder free of injuries and shoulder cuff injuries, you make sure you have the proper angle. I bring it down like I'm doing fly to get the full stretches I can, as low as possible. Then as I come up, I slowly bring the pecs in together and make the dumbbell almost touch. One continuous motion. And what kind of sets and reps program do you follow with your dumbbell presses? The same thing with dumbbell presses, I'll begin with a 50 pound dumbbell. I'll probably knock out maybe 15, 20 repetitions to get the blood. Then I would take 75, 90, 100, and probably 120 pounds. Four sets, 10 to 12 repetition, pyramid the weight. The reps doesn't change. The reason why it's important because you force yourself to handle more weight and stay with the same repetition. Too many guys handle heavy weight and pyramid down. When you start to pyramid up, that's the best way to build size and thickness. Lou Ferrigno uses dumbbell presses as a basic mass building exercise rather than relying on the more traditional barbell presses. Pressing with a barbell has its uses, he says, but this exercise is not necessarily for everyone. Yeah, because over the years, I stopped doing bench presses because it was giving me too much trouble with the shoulders. Because you see, whenever you grab a bar to do bench presses, the power movement, I switch to dumbbell because I have a greater range of motion and I can feel it more. I was able to stretch more. And when I would come in with the dumbbell, I was able to come in close to work the inner pec. The problem with bench press is they go in one direction. You're getting really getting maybe 30, 40 percent because you're working too much at the front down. Would you switch a young bodybuilder to dumbbells as well or would you let him do barbells for a few years and then switch? Well, right now, being I do personalized training, I've been doing it for years. When I have a youngster that comes to me like 14, 15, I'll explain to him he can do bench press, but I'll teach him how to do dumbbell pressure. Mainly for the reason is because he'll get a better pectoral development. If the kid wants to have an inflated ego and feel like he wants to bench 400, I said, okay, fine, do bench press with 400 pounds. You're not going to have the chest development. But the whole attitude is you're going to be a bodybuilder. Treat your body like a bodybuilder. Respect bodybuilding. If you want to go powerlifting, go to powerlifting. You can't put the two together. You can put the two together, maybe train it for yourself, but two separate, different you know, kind of training. You have to actually feel the muscle concentrate the time, stay time, make that connection. All pressing movements involve the front delts and the triceps, as well as the pectorals. Flies, on the other hand, are designed to work the pecs as much in isolation as possible. The second exercise you would normally do would be flies on a flat bench. Could you tell me what those do for you? Right, the reason why I go to a fly is because I follow the flies with the pressing movement. The reason why I like to train this fashion because when you do dumbbell presses and go to flies, it gives your tricep a chance to rest and you really can isolate the chest muscle. I never like to do flies at the very end because to me I found when you do benches or dumbbells, I think you're gonna do incline benches or dumbbells, and then when you go to flies, I feel like I'm starting to go through the motion. And I used to say to myself, why not maybe go a little bit heavy in the fly to really isolate and feel the muscle? Because once you do another pressing movement afterwards, the chest is fatigued, but your arms are fresh, you're forcing them to work harder. Flies to me is important though when you do it. It's like I said before, you really concentrate on the stretching. When you come up, don't lock out your arms, keep it slightly bent. Just imagine you're doing cable crossovers. You always gotta keep it tense. And you always wanna keep your chest high as you fly. The mistake too many people make that you kind of relax when they come down. You want to keep the chest high and come back 
always keep it tense. Because when you're on stage to pose, it's the same thing. You have to feel the muscle. The same thing when you do jet training. You have to feel every rep. I've heard of more chest and biceps injuries from dumbbell flies than I have from dumbbell presses. So how do you calculate how much weight you're going to use in that? Well, on the flies, I think if you do it correctly, there's a very little chance to hurt yourself because when you're coming down the fly, as long as your forearm is perpendicular to your upper arm, you're completely stretching the muscle. Too many bodybuilders make the mistake of keeping the arm straight, that when they come down, they completely stretch the chest, and that was taken over the bicep. The bicep got to force the arm to bend again to bring it up. With this extended position, you're going to tear a bicep. This happened to Tom Plath, I believe. Mm -hmm. So for myself, when I do flies, I take 50, 60, 70, and 80. When I've done the old fashion, 50 will be hurting me. It'll be hurting my shoulder, it'll be hurting my tendon. But if you're doing this fashion, you can't hurt yourself. That doesn't mean that you're gonna go to the gym tomorrow. Guys, you've been training two years to figure what Lou said. You can't hurt yourself, I can take 80. What I'm trying to say is 10 to 12 perfect repetitions without jerking. I start with 50, 10 to 12 rep, 60, 70, and 80. Four sets. Just think of perpendicular to the upper arm. As you come down, it's gotta be 90 degrees. Like this. The most important thing I find as you're watching me is when you come here, you have to focus. The most efficient way to work any muscle is on a direct line between point of origin and point of attachment. Since the pectorals have multiple points of origin, to train your chest completely, you need to work the pectorals at a variety of angles, on an incline, flat, and in some cases, on a decline. To fully develop the upper chest, Lou relies on incline barbell presses. You don't generally do barbell presses, but you do incline barbell presses. Yes, uh, because to me I find that it's more comfortable and a lot safer. When you're lying flat, you have a dead weight. But when you do incline barbell presses, you can bring the bar to the neck. And if the movement, it's not a power movement like bench press, because usually people with a bench press, they handle maybe 50% more than the handle of the incline. And the incline is very important to get that complete stretch. I find it to be safer for my shoulder to do incline bar presses than incline dumbbell presses. Incline dumbbell presses are people more of a stretch in your shoulder because you're going all the way down with the dumbbell, but when you have the bar, you kind of like you have your back and chest supporting the arm coming up. You go in one straight direction. Because once you put the bench on a 45 degree angle, you're in a dangerous position affecting the front deltoid. But if you really want to feel on the upper pec, it's important to have the bar touch the upper clavicle. The incline barbell press is an exercise that does tend to work specifically the upper area of the chest. It does. Not too much of a steep angle. I think the angle should be 30 degrees, no more. Once you go too steep at the angle, then you're taking over with the shoulders. How do you do barbell bench presses as a concentration exercise? Well, to me, the rule of thumb is any particular exercise like back training, curl, shoulder presses, and bench presses, always take a grip slightly wider than shoulder. The second thing you have to concentrate on when you begin to do bench presses, don't worry about how much weight you're going to put on the bar. Learn how to have the correct form. Bring the bar down when it comes down to the mid pack between the chest. The elbow to the side. Not like this, to the side. Because once you bring it in, you're working too much of the tricep. And come up and lock out slowly. If you take too much of a wide grip, you're not really you're working too much of the tricep, you're not really affecting the chest. If you take it too close to too much tricep, so basically if you have it this wide, slightly wide in the shoulder, bring it down and feel that full range of motion extended, that's the proper way to do bench presses. Let the weight come gradually by itself. Don't force the body to handle more weight. For example, if you're doing bench presses for 150, don't try to do 250 next week. Add 10 pounds at a time, when you feel your body tells you, let's handle more weight. Don't do heavy bench presses by yourself. Because if you get the bar stuck here, you're going to be spending more time in the cemetery than you're going to be in life. 
but dumbbell to me was safe for me. Pullovers actually work the lats as much as they do the chest. However, bodybuilders like Lou Ferrigno frequently include this movement in their chest routines because it tends to stretch and expand the entire rib cage area. What I love about doing pullover is the stretching exercise. It affects the intercostal, also the rib cage, and also works the entire pectoral muscles because when you go over, you're really stretching the upper and the lower chest. It gives you a full pump. It's kind of like a finishing movement, like the icing on the cake. When doing pullovers, you gotta be very careful how much weight you lift. I use maybe 75, 80 pound dumbbell. When you come back, the mistake most people make, they bend the arm too much, and you work in the tricep. You gotta keep the arm slightly bent, be across the bench, and drop your hip as you go down with the weight. It's not a, a really a math building exercise, more of a stretching exercise. And also, it helps the shape of the chest. Like for example, if you have a complete chest workout, sometimes some areas that you really haven't got a full pump, sometimes you do a pullover, it kind of like, um, it's like a feeling. It gives you a good feeling because I think it's very good for the body needs that stretching. And also it works parts for the air empty the console too. Pullovers, I would like to do three sets of 15 reps. It's very important because when you throw the double arm pose, you can have a complete chest development, but it's important the lower lot how it flares out. And also pullover really affect the front and down tour of the upper pack, the tie-in. It can help fill that area too. standing around, I'm always thinking about the next exercise I'm going to do. I keep my concentration. Cable crossovers are actually a kind of flying movement done with cables. Using cables, Lou is able to work through a much longer range of motion with increased safety stretching the pecs at full extension and flexing and squeezing them together at the position of full contraction without worrying about overstressing the muscles involved. I think one of the worst things to happen to a bodybuilder is the pectoral tear. Without a screw you up on doing shoulder presses, you can't do dips. When you do squatting movement, you need complete surgery. I have a few friends of mine that tore the pec. Why? They want to bench press 550 pounds. One of them never going to compete again. So that's why it's important to really respect your body. And I know it sounds like boring for me to say over and over, don't handle weights that are ridiculous for yourself, for your own uh, body, but respect the weight and respect your body. There are, of course, a number of other popular chest exercises. And Lou has tried them all during the past 30 years he's been training. The exercises he's recommending in this tape are the ones he's found work best for him and he recognizes they may not be the best for everybody else. Arnold can't chin properly. It's very hard for my chin. He's got one of the greatest back in bodybuilding. I could do 30 perfect chin. At the time, I never had a back development like him. I had to concentrate on different exercises. That's why when it comes to chest, Franco can have this incredible chest development just from doing bench presses. The reason why I'm talking openly like this is because there's not really one way to train. You have different choices. And other bodybuilders need to train like this. Like for example, my workout never begins all the time with dumbbell presses. Sometimes I start with the incline barbell presses, I go to flies, then I do the flat dumbbell presses. I change all the time. That's how you acquire complete chest development. Some bodybuilders need to do one exercise, they're fine. But all of us don't respond like that. However, although Lou recognizes no two bodybuilders will necessarily respond to the exact same kind of training, 
he also realizes that there is no essential difference between the kind of workouts that work best for men or for women. This is not only for men, this is for women. The only difference between men and women training, the difference is weight. Women train the same like men, they can do the same exercises and lead the same development. Trained by had the fear, like for example, you take a woman who can maybe do flies with 20 pound dumbbell. I made you 70. She'll acquire the same development. You don't have to be a man to train like this. This is good for kids, men, older people. And I think women especially would benefit a lot from this because they should train like this. When he first began training, Lou Ferrigno would often work out twice a day, six days a week. Nowadays, he's learned that less is more, that his body responds better when he trains hard for shorter periods of time and gives his muscles enough time to rest and recover. The training cycle, he recommends, is four days on, one day off, training with weights once a day, with a second session for aerobics, calves, and abdominal training, if desired. Lou's basic mass building exercise is dumbbell presses, done on a very slight incline. Four sets, 10 to 12 reps, increasing weight each set. Dumbbell flies are an important shaping and isolation chest exercise. Lou does four sets, 10 to 12 reps, increasing weight each set. Incline barbell presses work the upper pectoral area. Lou does four sets, 10 to 12 reps, increasing weight each set. Lou does dumbbell pullovers to stretch and expand the rib cage. Three sets, 15 reps, increasing weight each set. Cable crossovers allow for a maximum range of motion and a total peak contraction. Lou does three to four sets, 15 reps. Never be concerned about anybody else. Like for example, someone's lifting 500 pounds, doesn't mean you have to do the same thing. Don't compete with anybody else. Guys that made fun of me when I was doing they were young. Now they come to me for advice, how to build their body. You see, it all comes down to believing in yourself. Remember, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Just remember that. At last, the Weeder system is now available on video. You can benefit from the techniques that Joe Weeder has developed over the last 50 years working with the world champions. Whether you're just starting out or an active competitor, let Joe show you the principles that the great champions like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Franco Colombo, Lou Perigno, and Corey Everson have followed to ultimate success. The Weeder system can help you achieve the body you've always wanted and improve your performance in any sport. It's the ultimate method of weight control and the prescription for all around good health. The Weeder system is the lifestyle of the 90s. Get yours today. Here's how to order.